our world is more complex than it seems. Earth harbors numerous planes of existence that, for the sake of our reality, must remain separate. Portals to other worlds can take unexpected, everyday forms, making them difficult to identify, seal and destroy. Today, we will explore one of these interdimensional gateways, an object whose position has changed hands multiple times. We we'll discuss the risk it poses, not only to us, but to its own inhabitants as well. Item number SCP-1660 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-1660-1 may be safely kept in a locked safe deposit box outside Storage Facility Standard Positive Action Defenses Explosive, Chemical, Biological and Mimetic are to be in place at all times, according to Standard Operating Procedure. SCP-1660-1 is to be kept away from flammable materials unless in testing. Under no circumstances is SCP-1660-1 to come into contact with fire-related SCPs, such as SCP. In event of SCP-1660-1 igniting outside, testing personnel are to evacuate the area until all flaming materials are extinguished. Due to only being accessible via SCP-1660-1, SCP-1660-2 can be considered to be contained as long as SCP-1660-1 is. Any animal life that emerges from SCP-1660-2 during testing is to be captured, pending study and possible termination. Description SCP-1660-1 is an elaborate, decorative oil lamp made from silver, coral, and the shell of an audience. Its anomalous effects activate if a fire is lit inside the chamber of the Nautilus shell. Upon ignition, the fire, regardless of materials used, begin to emit large amounts of smoke. The smoke will begin to gather, forming an arch-shaped gate in the air approximately meters across. The size and stability of said gate will fluctuate based on the amount and or type of material being burned within SCP-1660-1. In the event of SCP-1660-1 being extinguished, the gateway will collapse rapidly. SCP-1660-2 is a miniature parallel universe consisting of approximately square kilometers of temperate forest conditions which can be accessed by means of the gate produced by SCP-1660-1. Around the edges of SCP-1660-2 are walls of an as of yet unidentified mineral, rating up to on the Mohs scale. Testing with diamond drills have been unable to damage the mineral, while rapidly blunting drill bits. Roughly a kilometer above the treetops is what appears to be a layer of All aerial exploration is to be performed with unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs, following incident. Attempts at drilling below ground have revealed that a crust of the same unidentified mineral making up the walls exists approximately half a kilometer under the entire area of SCP-1660-2. List of animal species within SCP-1660-2 Ursus arctos Brown bear Specimens show no fear of humans. Olocoyelus virginianus White-tailed deer Specimens show no fear to humans. Maiaris lucifugus, brown bat. Specimens prefer to rest in trees hanging from big branches rather than in caves. Poesilea tricapillus, black cave chickadee. Specimens possess small notched ridges inside their beaks, serving as simple teeth. The reason for this is unknown, as specimens do not fit differently than ordinary chickadees. Anax imperator, emperor dragonfly. Specimens have been seen to reach sizes of up to millimeters. How they are able to breathe via spiracles while at these sizes is unknown. NA SCP-1660-3 Unidentified flagless bird A large flagless herbivorous bird, somewhat like an emu. NA SCP-1660-4 Unidentified small reptile mammal, a small creature resembling a scaly, 
thick laying fox with external ears, warm blood and whiskers. NA SCP-1660-5 Unidentified eyeless feline Specimen resembles a cougar, puma con color, or other type of big cat apart from lacking eyes and possessing forward extended rod-like ears and the ability to echolocate. NA SCP-1660-6 Unidentified giant turtle A creature exactly identical to the common box turtle, the rapine, apart from its size, with adults reaching up to meters in height and having proportionally smaller eyes. NA SCP-1660-7 A 2 meter long, extremely dangerous reptomammalian creature resembling an armored bioluminescent SCP-1660-7 are pack hunting predators, comparable in behavior to wolves, although they do not fear humans and are capable of climbing trees or the walls of SCP-1660-2. Due to their lack of fear for humans, they have been noted to attack personnel in SCP-1660-2, frequently killing them. Under no circumstances are personnel permitted to approach SCP-1660-7 specimens for this reason, as well as list of plant specimens within SCP-1660-2. Quercus nigra, water oak, normal. Quercus hippolucoides, silverleaf oak, specimens grow slightly faster than ordinary members of their species. Quercus aliena, oriental white oak, specimens grow considerably larger, reaching up to meters in height compared to ordinary members of their species. Pinus densiflora, Japanese red pine, normal. N8, SCP-1660-8, unidentified moss. A rapidly growing type of moss of unknown species, covering other plants and the walls of SCP-1660-2. History, SCP-1660-1 was recovered on by agent a foundation mold from a front for Marshall, Carter and Dark, who were selling safaris into SCP-1660-2 to hunt local wildlife. SCP-1660-5, SCP-1660-6 and SCP-1660-7. Classified, level 4 personnel only. Document Alpha SCP-1660-7. Report from Director The information in the article that you've already read left out, or more accurately, expunged something quite important. SCP-1660-7 They aren't simply a kind of dangerous predator. We said that to keep personnel away from them. They're sapient. Their forepaws are joined to work like human hands. They have simple tools, fire, and a language of their own, based on bioluminescent patterns. It is their cave paintings, however, which interest us. Crude humanoid figures holding sticks and killing with them at a distance, shooting projectiles. Then, a battle with the same sticks, new figures, and the end of the killing. And the symbol copied off the new figures the symbol in front of which they leave food in sacrifice, the symbol which they smear all over things, with ash and plant pigment, or glow into trees, the symbol of their gods. Two rings, one inside the other, with three arrows pointing inward. And look. We recognize that the SCP Foundation did the right thing by taking the portal away from Marshall, Carter and Dark. However, by keeping it and continuing to experiment with this anomaly, they've created unpredictable complications for the future. The Foundation and its leaders already see themselves as gods. What could they do with possession of a dimension where they are treated as such? The GOC is committed to finding and destroying this portal ensuring that our world stays protected from both outside influences 
and power-hungry organizations like the SCP Foundation. Help us in this effort by leaving your comments and suggestions on the video. I am Virus Anonimo. We at the GOC, and you have been informed.